get it started and, and it's just slow to get started because it's only five minutes still chunk of time anyway. More like five. So. Yeah. She just said that four seconds ago. Listen, you were just like playing. They'll say so to y'all both. All right, guys. Welcome to our second annual coffee house sponsored by Bacon County High School's own Search Club. And just sit back, relax, and our first performer is Star Kane. <laughs> That's what you were Go Star! Yay! Look at that. Give a love. So you can clap. I can't snap, so I'm going to clap. Nope. I can snap. Sort of. I'll be singing Concrete Angel by Martina McBride. She walks to school with a lunch she packs. Nobody knows what she's holding back. Wearing the same dress she wore yesterday. She has the bruises with the linen and lace. The teacher wonders, but she doesn't ask. It's hard to see the pain behind the mask Bearing the burden of a secret storm Sometimes she wishes she was never born Through the wind and the rain She stands hard as a stone In a world that she can't rise above But her dreams give her wings And she flies to a place where she's loved Somebody cries in the middle of the night. The neighbors hear, but they turn out the light. A fragile soul caught in the hands of fate. When morning comes, it'll be too late. Through the wind and the rain, she stands hard as a stone in a world that she can't rise above. But her dreams give her wings. And she flies to a place where she's loved. Concrete angel. A statue stands in a shaded place. An angel girl with an upturned face. A name is written on a polished rock. A broken heart that the world forgot. Through the wind and the rain. She stands hard as a stone in a world that she can't rise above. But her dreams give her wings and she flies to a place where she's loved. Concrete angel. What's on a piece of paper? He wrote a poem called like Happy. Now. We can hear you. Because it was something he wished to experience. That was the year his dad left and his mom worked all the time. And the new girl down the road smiled at him for the first time. And he smiled back with hope that things would get better. Once on a piece of paper with red lines, he wrote a poem called Love. Because it was some something he barely got anymore. That was the year his father stopped calling completely. His mother got a new boyfriend. And the little time they had been spending together disappeared. And the girl down the road moved away. He should have stopped believing that things would get better, but he didn't. Once on a little piece of paper, he wrote a poem called Goodbye, because that was what he was ready to say. That was the year he found out his father had another family. His mother got married to her boyfriend. He hadn't seen the girl down the road in five years. And the smile she gave him was just a memory. He laid on his bed wishing his life could have been either, could have been better than he opened. He up, then he opened the bottle and swall swallowed all its contents, and slowly his world faded to black. I'm Tiffany. Um, I'm going to be performing a song that I wrote called My House. I'll fight to the death to stay alive, even with that said.
writing poetry since I was in 11th grade. Uh, I, I love writing. It helps me, I don't know, live. I, when I write, I feel like it's um, the only time I'm truly myself, so that's why I write. This one I wrote, I wrote probably about a year ago. Uh, I was 23, so, uh, and I, you, if you've heard me read, you've probably heard this before, but I, I'm gonna read it again because I like it a lot, so. I must have written myself away because every day I awake, I awake with no faith and empty. Just so weightless, I swear I could float away. And I can't find my gravity. And I can't keep my feet on the ground. And I swear it's like I've just blended into the background. Just a piece of the scenery. A disaster so intriguing that your eyes look upon me but don't notice that I'm a human being. Bleeding out this blood flow that's not visibly seen and pleading in another language because my words you seem not to be understanding. I'm hopelessly demanding, crashing down with no chance of a safe landing. A tragedy that will make news for the most mindless. I've lost control, better yet, never had it. I never had the real to grab. It. As it quakes my ground, it leaves me lost at home. I become an addict to the nothingness that creeps through my matter. With hope to better, I just become rebattered. My world is shattered. I live my life in pieces, close to death and barely alive. Every day as I try to regather. Huh. Welcome to the circus with the main attraction, Trisha, the intriguing disaster. So, uh, I'm Zach. Maybe some of you remember me from the last one. Maybe not. Apparently she does. But, uh, so I'll be reading, I'll actually be reading two poems. If you do remember me from the last one, you maybe you'll remember what I read. Maybe not. Woo, I don't know. Woo. Apparently still, again, she does. <laughs> but um, the first one I'll be reading about some stuff that was kind of going on and pretty much led me to, just going to be honest, hate most of society. And uh, you're in a poetry club, you probably hate society too. <laughs> just being honest. Well, uh, I'm going to get done with that for this. But... Uh, this is a kind of a pretty personal poem, but I decided to share it with you. And it was kind of finished five minutes ago, so <laughs> it might have a couple errors in it, maybe not be that great. Hopefully it will. So have we forgotten who we are, because all we're doing is looking at the scars and looking at the imperfections, and it's killing me. It's all just so vexing. Our eyes have been sh sewn shut, and we're all stuck, living in a rut. Stripped of identity. We've lost ourselves, you and me. But don't you see what we are? We're slaves to conformity. Lives live by the TV and what's on the screen. It's clear what I mean. I mean, we've all seen it. They'll look. The boys flexing. The girls anorexing. Just hoping for acceptance from society. But who needs them when you got me and you got him and you got her? But that's all she heard. Be yourself. Don't follow the crowd. But that's pretty hard when you're almost not allowed to be different. That wasn't her intent, giving it up at 15. But thanks to the mainstream, that truck looked more inviting than staying at home texting like most teens. A matter of time before the drugs come in, the heroin, the oxycotton. What about the kids that think they got a good... I'm sorry. Uh, potato and mush plus. <laughs> a matter of time before the drugs come in. Heroin, Oxycontin. What about the kids that think that God is good at get good? <laughs> oh, come on. I'm doing so terrible right now. 
What about the kids that think they got as good as it gets? Popping pills, smoking the marijuana cigarettes. What about the, and what about a clear mind? These athletes, they get the scholarship like 25% of the time. Knowledge is lacking in this generation, but praise for drugs and violent confrontation. It doesn't make sense. I mean, I'd rather be a graduate with three cribs than popping caps with some gang war with the crips. And what happened to love? To me, it's when you care about someone and put nothing above. Not when you fight and the guy's hitting the girl. If you're there, you're in a pretty dark world. At that point, the love's dead, and the guy kind of deserves a 44 mag round in the head. And what I said earlier about violence, that doesn't apply to abusive guys, because they're just all horrible people that pretty much just need to die. But that's a different round for a different time. Right now, I'm concentrated on bashing conformity, the music, the TV. What happened to identity? Come on. All right, so nothing is... What? Thank you. All right, and now I'll be reading a different poem. This is actually all I, I intended to just read this poem today, but uh, thanks to Miss Carter, everyone look at her so I don't feel awkward because I'm being stared at because I'm very uncomfortable right now. I'm gonna hide. Okay, I'm joking. But uh, if I can find it, I've written too many poems and it's taking me a little too long. There we go. All right, so most of you probably heard this, but I will. I fall apart as you're within. I can see my chances growing thin. I see my chance, but I won't take it. You're for him, and I won't take it. You're a hurricane. I'm just a submarine. The quiet poet, but you know it, that I'm hiding behind these lies with these watering eyes. My sp I'm just going to go away. I'm joking. <laughs> my paper smiles, but you're miles away. But now, today's the day that I finally say goodbye. I'm moving on. I'm leaving with him and this song. Close. There. <laughs> All right, so I uh, hope you liked it. Find me on YouTube. Look up people call me Zach. No one's going to remember that. I'm Sitar Richardson. I'm a junior here at Bagan County, and I'm going to sing a song I wrote called What Holds Me Down. <laughs> I may say I'm not afraid. I may act as if I'm okay. But inside, I'm screaming out. And outside, I'm holding it down. I know it's not right how I feel. I need to be shown something real. So can you just smile for me? Show me what happiness means. Send me free, put my pain at ease. Come for me, lend a shoulder, please. Fill my dreams with hope to be free of what holds me down. Sometimes I feel that I'm hopeless. Nowhere to turn, I'm out and open. My book can be read from miles away, and all I want is to be okay. So, can you just smile for me? Show me what happiness means. Set me free, put my pain at ease. Come for me. A shoulder, please fill my dreams with hope to be free of what holds me down. And now I'm letting go, and even I don't know what it'll take to you. But in time, I know I will. If you just smile for me, say.
from Moore County. I'm in Miss Cunningham's third block class. Um, I'm 15, and the song I'm singing today is simple, and everyone knows it, but that's probably why I love it so much. Um, without getting into all the sad details, my mom was diagnosed with leukemia uh, in January of 2011, and um, this song meant a lot to her and I, so we used to sing it a lot, and this is kind of just a dedication to her, for because um, without her I probably would not have the confidence to be up here and singing to you today, so I hope you like it. <laughs> Chestnuts roasting on an open fire Jack Frost nipping at your nose The old tide carols being sung by your choir And folks dressed up like Eskimos Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe to make the season bright. Johnny Tots with their eyes all aglow will find it hard to sleep tonight. They know that Santa's on his way. He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on a sleigh. And every mother's child is gonna spy to see if reindeer really know how to fly. And so I'm offering this simple phrase to kids. Row one to ninety-two. Although it's been said many times, many ways. Merry Christmas to you. My name is Libby Summerall, and I'm a junior at Work County High School. I write poetry about things I know, and I know scars. I'm extremely gawky and stubborn, so scars flock to me naturally. But those bumply, ug ugly skin scars aren't the only scars we get to, as people. Some are inside, and some are much more encompassing of our past, our present, and our future. Every scar tells a story, like falling off a bike or picking up a cat I was told not to touch. They cover my tattered body like words on a page, every one of them making me who I am. Then there are the ones I hold inside, and they tell a story, too of a broken love or a night I cried myself to sleep. They aren't so easily seen or understood like metaphors and good poetry, but they make me who I am too. <laughs> All of the scars we hold inside, not the gross lumpy ones, are the ones that make us, uh, that make good art, especially gorgeous poetry. Heartache leads to words, striking and bitter like, feel, like the feeling deep in your chest. And these words create sentences, sorrowful and rapid like the tears that fall from your eyes. And these sentences form perfect poetry that perfectly tells the story of a pain you feel throughout your whole being. Because poetry is pain, and pain is poetry. Hi, I'm Miss C, and this is Henry. And we're a tag team writing duo. That's true. That's true. Um, um, for the longest time, I really wanted to write poetry, but I never really had the opportunity <coughs> until this year because I never really had anybody who would tell me, like, how to do it. But, um, <laughs> but um, Miss C was talking about writing poetry and how she helped students write it in class one day. And so after class, I went up to her and was like, can we write some poetry? And she was like, yeah, yeah, you know. Whatever, let's let's do it, and so um, and so we did, and we wrote three poems that day, but we're only going to be sharing two, so um, this is one of them. Did he say or, he's like you got yeah. <laughs> Have you ever just wanted to start over? 
Have you ever made a mistake that will haunt you forever? If so, have you forgiven yourself? This poem is about someone who has had enough and has finally learned that in order to be happy, all she has to do is be herself. <laughs> this poem is called Night Light. Pushing aside the curtain, finally she saw what she had always wanted, a sunny day bearing a new beginning, a past no longer prevalent, a future full of hope, like a young phoenix born from the ashes of its predecessor. Just as she lifted her brush from the wooden artist's easel, she felt a great weight lifted from her soul. Why had she stayed away from that which kept her happy, to be that which she never could? Was she afraid, afraid of facing the truth? Where had her mind gone all those long years? Her conscience pleading, you should have spoken up for yourself when you had the chance, when it wasn't too late to turn back, when she had dignity, even when you had none. It was one blue night when the black was like a velvet blanket around her that she finally realized no more. Have you ever known something you wanted to do, but had no idea how to go about doing it? Have you ever tried to build something without any clue how to build it, without blueprints or even a sketch? You end up with a jumble of pieces, a hodgepodge of broken parts, an incoherent structure that could have been great, but was thrown away by the architect. Life is much the same. Without a plan, we are merely meandering shells without a purpose. In our meandering, we wander into forbidden places and come away with scars, both physical and emotional, that will stay with us forever. This one's called House of Walls. A wise man once told me that to have two homes is to have two souls, and so I saved to build my foundations on a mountainside and on the shore, where I hoped to save my soul from transgressions past. Walls were erected on solid foundations, present yet without order, Walls on walls, yet it wasn't a house, it was a maze. A maze I was destined to wander until my sins and the sins of my fathers forced me into a corner with no ceiling and no floor. It was here in this place that I realized no matter what I did, I would never be able to outrun these demons. They were too quick for this withered, mortal body. And so I surrendered to the hurt, to the pain, to the ill will, to the lack of forgiveness, to the dishonor that I have brought upon myself and all others whom I have ever loved because I waited too long to quit while I could. No matter the cost, I would never quit until it was too late. Aww. That's, so sweet. <laughs> That's just so much love. <laughs> We're waiting. Hey, I'm going to do mine real quick. Okay. And tonight, I didn't do anything I wrote. I just said, you know, I, I'm not going to do that this year. Uh, Libby, that was up here a moment ago, Libby's crazy amazing. And she wrote these poems, and for my birthday this year, she just gave me this compilation of poems, and she was like, happy birthday, and I'm like, goody. <laughs> and uh, so I wanted to share one that really spoke to me, and... Um, Maybe I won't cry. <laughs> Emotional pain is something that can defy words. I mean, what do we do when we watch our beloved grandmother lying in a hospital bed, tubes in every orifice? I mean, how do we stay strong in the face of such? Or what about when we dig that hole and we bury our furry dog child of 14 years, that faithful friend who never left our side as we battled cancer or worse? Tonight I will be sharing a poem that speaks to those silent tears in the night a poem that reminds us that women, we're stronger, the stronger creature who bears the weight of this world, oftentimes in silence. And I want to thank my beloved Libby Summerall, my soul sister daughter friend, with whom I can write and be myself for sharing this poem with me and in turn allowing me to share it with you. Libby, I thank you for writing a poem that defies the silence while embracing it. If the wind was a lady, it'd be her all high and mighty. 
on days of stormy weather, loud and boisterous, like it had an opinion that surpasses everyone else in the world. And it does. Because nobody argues with the wind. But sometimes in the middle of the night, mostly, the wind gets quiet and scared and hides itself away beneath the trees and the bushes and cries alone, low and painful, like it's been hurt its entire life. And it has. But the wind won't cry to anyone because nobody would be scared of a wind that cries itself to sleep at night. And the last one, I had an intro at school that never was printed. And I'm so glad I left it because there's some girls here with me tonight. They'll know who they are. So I'm just going to say this one's for my girls. And this poem is by Kelsey Allen, and it's really short, but I really like it. And I would say as an intro, this is for my girls who've worn the facade, who've dreamt while others slept, who refused to give in or up, and who stood while others fell. With the wind on her lips, she stands taller than life and remembers the sorrow as well as the strife. A few too many times, she has been beaten down. A few too many times, she's hit the ground. She's whispered goodbye to her hopes and her dreams, and she'll tell you it's not as easy as it seems. But now that it's all over, and she faces the world to show us what's left of this magnificent girl. These are the these are the new ones I wrote. This is from the past week, and uh, some of them is uh, some of them is about what I'm going through right now. Uh, I mean, honestly, I'm going through such a relation, uh, and then some of them are things that I go through at work. Uh, sometimes dealing with the people up there is hard, and uh, I get real mean, and uh, I don't know, I just don't like being mean. So you know, at night when no one sees, it sort of breaks me down. And that's when I write, so. This first one, though, is about. <sighs> okay, so it goes like this. Oh, where are the better days? I swear in our vows, we said for better or worse. But we've only let the worst as if from the better were bad. And being a man, we can only take so much. And I feel myself giving up, but you say you're fine, though I don't believe fine is enough. And so the stress is piling up that my shoulders are so way down as if I'm bowing in surrender. Here, have it all as I try to salvage my heart that's so sourly bittered. And you try to salvage your heart, I so recklessly injured. I'm sorry for the pain, but I believe in the end we both finally will mend because we're not there to tear each other apart again. Such a destructive love, what a waste of passion. If there was anything left, it's lost in what has been. another one sort of about the same thing so <clears throat> I begged you to see the good in me but you said you could never see what every other thought they saw so from the sky my heart would fall and into the dark my thoughts would call and I'd cradle up inside the walls and truth chain me to honesty with eyes seeing what you saw and somehow the good would dissolve and I'd be left with nothing at all and then my thoughts would transcend into the air at midnight and I'd read all I really was with eyes that couldn't shut tight and fright would win the fight at night by fear there was nothing inside and these words are just exhaled by mere tears begging for the good to reappear and I'm just here being nothing more or better than trying to change me and pleading for it to affect the rest of man but no one hears and no one sees and these words serve so measly but they pry at the depths of me so frantically mission to bring what was lost to light and begging for the good to reside How do I explain that there are two sides to me? A good versus a bad, and a bad exhales fire as it breathes. And how do I explain that it's not only me, but also every other human being? We fight for what we cannot see. We fight for our better meaning. And as we fight and lose, we beg for a new beginning. But some of us just lose ourselves completely while the rest of us are hanging on desperately. There's a plea in us to be better than what we're being. And I felt an answer and every day I'm breathing. My heart seems bitter and my anger withers. Every soul that comes nearer and I curse and I hate and I cause suffering with the words I say. I am not what 
what I am. I can be better. I am bland. Weaker than the weakest link. More exposed than an ant. There's more to me and there's more to man. Besides, what is living if we're living for ourselves? It's not enough. We can excel. I'm not saying to be perfect. I'm saying to perfect. To achieve what we see and not what we're being. My name is Azalea and I am singing and I'm singing my lost out poem. <laughs> On a white piece of paper with On a white piece of paper with no line, she wrote a poem called It Kill Me because that's what she loved most. That was the year her brother got married and her parents renewed their vows. And the boy next door kissed her cheek, making a white teeth pink tint appear. Her father told her the princess story every night, and he was always there to hear it. Once on a parchment, she wrote a poem called Depression because that's what she was going through. That's the year her brother stopped visiting and her parents separated because all they could do was fight. And the boy next door moved away. She hadn't heard the princess story in four years. Once on a fine sheet of paper, she wrote a poem called Science because that's all she heard. That's the year her mother died and, the, and her father got married to a lady that hated her. And, every, and everyone at school picked on her because she only wore the long sleeves and she could and she could hide the scars. She stood in the bathroom with the sharp razor pressing down on her skin, barely noticing she was going to be. Because the feeling was so familiar, she, she looked in the pain, it only, it only lasted a second, and then darkness consumed her, and she finally dropped and turned her phone off. Okay, I'm gonna read two poems. Scars covered with Maderma only hide the tears woven into a blanket with which we sleep, bear the wounds from underneath. Covered in, com covered in comfort, warmth from hope, reveals a bruise to at we poke. Know it hurts, a steady image. If it's not broke, don't try to fix it. Comprehend what's done is over, like salt tossed over your sho shoulder. Good luck with superstition, it turns some colder. Afraid to take risk, afraid to be bolder. Turned away by the thought of what's left behind. In the wake of one's mind, when everything seems to change, scars are all that remains. <coughs> this one's called Seasons. Winter nights, black as pitch, cold as ice. Silence rings, breaths are seen, snow white and serene. Morning freeze, hibernation, woods and forests, desolation. Animals patiently waiting, quietly awakening, rebirth of Mother Earth, spring fever, vast meadows, melting snow, warm weather. Rain slow, feels like forever, forever, getting hotter, summer's knocking, darker skin, sandals flopping, blue skies, dogs walking. Leaves changing, discoloration, fading brown, autumn's waiting, pears, grow, pears growing, Halloween tricks and Thanksgiving feast, holiday season filled with glee. Temperatures dropping, buttons popping, family affairs and Christmas Eve, opening presents under the tree. Seasons change, alternating, the cycle repeats, never ceasing, never fading. This is my last song, so this is a song I wrote called um, Wake Up. You've been hurt and ridiculed. People on the outside can be so cruel. No one told you life wasn't easy. Now you're tired of being mistreated. So at night you slip away. And in your dreams, it's one place you'll stay. So darling, don't wake up. If you're scared to smile forever, we can stay in your dreams tonight. Oh, darling, don't wake up. Ignore every little sound and keep your dreams long thrown out. Oh, darling, don't wake up. Trust me, I understand. Some dreams are too real to just let them in. Don't wake up. 
Attackers may come from every direction, but you have your own protection. No problems in your way when you're asleep, and in your dreams you want to be. So darling, don't wake up if you're scared this fine. Forever we can stay in your dreams tonight. Oh darling, don't wake up. Ignore every little sound and keep your dreams long thrown out. Oh darling, don't wake up. Trust me, I understand. Some dreams are too real to just let them in. So darling, don't wake up. Don't wake up. But just for me, when you find the strength. And you see the world's not as bad as it seems. Because the world's not as bad as it seems. Darling, wake up. I don't be by your side. I never try to hurt your crumbling pride. So darling, wake up. Okay, so originally I was just gonna read my essay, but Miss Cunningham came up to me and was like, you should write another poem. And I had like a couple hours and I'm not really good under pressure. And so David was like, let's just sing a song. <laughs> And we had a couple ideas, but this song is really special to us because this year for homecoming, <laughs> he came in my class in a suit and sung the song to me. She asked me homecoming. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to sing this song. It's called Aeroplane Over the Sea by Neutral Milk Hotel. I need a chair. Yeah, probably. I'll grab you a chair. <laughs> <laughs>
girl. Hi. My name's Autumn. And I realize too often that people let their circumstances define who they are. Time after time, I see people saying they can't have a successful life because their parents were never there. Adults refusing to be successful because they don't like our president. All of these are examples of poor excuses for not living up to full potential. I know a man who is considered by family and friends to be a genius and one of the most kind-hearted men they've ever known. However, if you knew where this man came from, you would never guess his fate. For, his, for the sake of his privacy, we will call him Bill. At a young age, Bill was diagnosed with a terrible kidney disease. Doctors predicted he wouldn't live past the age of 21. Even with this immense pressure on his back, it did not stop him from becoming the strongest, most feared boy on the playground. He had a policy of kicking butt and taking names. As the years went by, a dark secret haunted Bill. He was continually being raped by a relative, along with other adults. Not wanting the news to get out, his parents brushed the abuse under the rug. Bill bottled in years and years of anger and hurt. Then came high school. Bill met the love of his life. We'll call her Jenny. His policy of kicking butt and taking names continued as he practically wiped out the competition. Jenny got pregnant at 17. Therefore, she and Bill were married before they finished high school. As time progressed, all that bottled anger came out in voices. Those voices wanted revenge. Jenny loved Bill, however, the drugs and the illness were on top of two children were too much at the time. She sent him away. After some time, Bill rounded up $125. He bought the $120 bus ticket to go back home and make things right. He had $5 in a Walmart bag. When he arrived, Jenny still needed proof of change. Bill was in and out of homeless shelters when his mother worked it out for him to come and work at a church. He loved church, although he felt he wait, made way too many mistakes to ever grow as a Christian. The voice still pleaded with him for revenge. Jenny saw Bill's, Bill's effort and took him back. They had their third child by this time. Bill still wanted to protect his family from his disability, hence the time in mental wards and 18 different medications a day. His health continued to deteriorate with kidneys, a pacemaker, and seizures that had developed over the years. He couldn't loose himself of the anger he felt. One night, after five years of nothingness spent trying to mask the issue, Bill had a thought, the measure of faith. He realized despite his flaws, he could be a Christian and grow in God. Bill found his reason to live. To this day, Bill still hears voices, has seizures, failing kidneys, and that pacemaker. Yet he's a different man. He forgave his uncle. He is now a youth pastor, father of four, recovery minister, and a licensed chaplain. A person would never guess the things he struggled with in his past. He uses them as a testimony to those who are going through the same thing or worse. Bill is truly a great example of overcoming circumstance to become something great. Hi, I'm Chastity. Um, my poem's called Lighthouse. I want to be the light in your dark, dark days. I want to shine bright so you can find your way. Open your eyes, soak it all in. Get to know me and my deepest thoughts before you lose me and not know what all you've lost. We are so close, but so far away. Some would say we're so close to being far away, but prove them all wrong. Hold me tight. But don't tell me that you love me because I do not want us to love. I want us to be the waves in the ocean that travel to each other's shores. Like ships in the night, meeting in the light that guided them the whole way. I want to be your destiny. I want to be your need. I'm reading a poem that I wrote from Miss Carter's class. That's my teacher. Y'all look at her. It makes her feel old. So, um, I didn't name it because I couldn't figure out a name for it. So it's just a wildflower poem. Okay. Once a boy wrote a poem on a piece of paper and called it Live because that was something he never got to do being in and out of the hospital all his life. He never showed it to anyone because he left it at the hospital in his secret drawer. That was the year his mother sat by his hospital, hospital bed and cried. His father wouldn't even, wouldn't even look at him and both of his parents were only together because of him. Once a teenager wrote a poem on a yellow piece of paper and called it Laugh because it was something he never did anymore. He always had to be serious. That was the year his mother started sitting by his bed less and less. His father couldn't even be in the same room as him, and his parents hadn't been together for four years. Once a man wrote a poem on a white piece of paper and called it love, but because, because it was something he hadn't and never would experience. 
that was the year his mother hadn't visited him in two years. His father had died in his home with his new family in a fire, and he had heard his mother had a baby and got remarried. He lay in his hospital bed that night, unable to move because of how weak he was. He smiled up as he seen a bright light, and his eyes slowly co closed as he left the world and went to a place where he could live, laugh, and love. You guys were my name's Taylor, and I grew up really hard, I guess you could say. I've always been talked down by everyone in my family. Never had any support, ever. And I always found relief in poem poetry. Miss Cunningham got me writing a lot this year, and I came to write this poem. And this is the story of a broken girl. Just another face in the crowd, not knowing what to do. No different than you, yet viewed as an outcast. Just another face in the crowd with a story to tell, itching to let it all out, yet afraid of judgment. Just another face in the crowd whose cries for help go unnoticed, crying for someone to come, yet no one answers. Just another face in the crowd who's dying on the inside, whose life is falling apart, yet all is ignored as she drifts away. Just another face in the crowd, just another mind in mayhem, just another lost soul in the clouds, just another day in the life of a broken girl. This is a poem I wrote about everything that was going on in my life last year, about this time, so. The words you spoke could make me cry, but I hung on to you like death. Such living was not easy. We yell until the walls shake and the pictures fall. My heart silent cries, the words that couldn't be heard. The hands that held my life, they have scars from your past. At every word you say wrong, another scar comes along. You beat your life in my head with a heart cold as ice, then sent me off to bed, still clinging on to your words. Hello. Hello, how are you? Good, we've got a good, great audience. Uh, my name's Sarah Setzer. What's up, Sarah? Nothing much. Uh, I go to Ward County High School. All right. And no, it's it's good that they're talking because y'all are going to be talking with my poem. I I wrote my poem for me to just talk, but then I'm sitting here reading it. And I'm like, well, y'all can talk too. But first, let me kind of describe my poem right quick. Um, it's graphic. <laughs> um, not, not graphic in the way you think, <laughs> but graphic in the way that most people live their lives. Um, now, here's how this is going to roll. I'm going to say two lines, and then all of you are going to go why when I go like this, all right? Can we, you're going to say why. Can we try that? Whenever I go like this, ready? Why? Oh, come on. We can do the better than that. Why? Great. Perfect. Are we ready? Are we ready? We're always ready. All right. Mother says to doctor, why didn't the abortion take? Doctor doesn't reply. He has no answer. Why? Mother says to father, why won't you stay? Father doesn't reply. He has an answer, but she's not worth it. Why? Baby, uh, mother says to baby, why won't you stop crying? Baby doesn't reply. All he can do is cry. Why? Cop, uh, cop says to son, why do you do drugs? Son doesn't reply. All he can do is smirk. Why? Family says to son. Oh, nope. Friends say to son. Why won't you change your life? Son doesn't reply. All he can do is smirk. Why? Family says to son. Why are you doing this? He doesn't reply. All he can do is swing. Why? Cop says to son, why did you do it? Why did you kill them? He doesn't reply. All he can do is cry. Why? Finally, son says to mother on death row, why did you have me? Why was I born? 
She doesn't reply. I don't know. Oh, no, she does reply. I don't know. I was born. His life ended that day. Why? Because nobody cared. I'm back, but not really. Um, <laughs> here's the deal. I was getting excited. I know. Um, make a long story short, this child today wins the prize because she wrote this amazing poem, and then I, like, left it at my house. Oh, shame. Oh, come on, where's the, you know. Shame. And, um, so I said to her, just think, you can share it next semester, still love me. Here's a sucker. You know, candy makes everything better, and she sat down and rewrote her whole poem. So that's how much she wanted you to hear it tonight. And this is Ashley, and it's amazing, and here it is. Go, Ashley. Woo. Um, I don't really talk in front of people like, um, I'm like really shy if you know me, and I don't talk about my personal stuff, so this is like a good thing to talk about. So, here it goes. Once a week, a man came to see her, and she called him daddy because she loves saying it, and that's what it was all about. He gave her a hug and a kiss, and her mother cringed whenever she saw him. That was the year he took her to Kids Kingdom and let her play on the slide. And her brother was born with his cute little kitty and his blonde hair. And her granny and papa came to see her all the time. And all her family lived around the corner. And she would always ask her mom when she could see her daddy again. She would say next week. Once a month, a man came to see her and she called him daddy because she couldn't say it that often. And that's what it was all about. She asked for a hug and a kiss. And she wouldn't let her mom comfort her when he wouldn't. That was the year he couldn't take her to Kids Kingdom because he didn't have any money. And she saw with him buy things with the money he said he didn't have. And her brother was sweet and loving with his pointy cowboy boots and steel blonde hair. And her granny and papa called because he couldn't get out much. And that was the year her aunt got sick. And she would always ask her mom when she could see her daddy again. She would say, I don't know. Once every blue moon, a man came to see her and she called him daddy because she never said it. And that's what it was all about. She didn't ask for a hug or a kiss because she knew he wouldn't. That was the year Kids Kingdom shut down. And she didn't even care. And her little brother got mad at almost everything with his worn out boots and curly brown hair. And her papa would call because her granny would forget. And that was the year her aunt died. And her sister had to explain because her mom would just cry. And she didn't ask when she could see her daddy because she knew she wouldn't. She never saw her daddy and she never said daddy because she didn't have a reason to. And that's what it was all about. She had her mom who was always there for her even if she didn't know what her to do. And Granny and Papa met her aunt in heaven. And that's what it was all about. Okay, while Justice is coming up, let him just go ahead and grab this mic. Y'all just don't understand. I'm so proud of this child. They don't even have her, never taught her. But I feel like I've always known her. What do you know? Uh, where's the extension cord? The extension cord is on this table. Hey, Henry, look behind you. It's in a clear bag and it's brown. Well, Not that I'm joking. I like this lady. She's pretty cool. You have no idea. I have a pretty good idea. Yes. You've expressed how you're we, We'll have to let you come and uh, hang with us when we have ours. Yes? Yes. You'll come. I'll come. I'll come. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be the loudest one there. See what else me. Okay. I, I won't have to worry. <laughs> you won't. Can I ask anybody those now? Very loud. You're always loud. All right. Anyway, so Justice, I think you'll be able to say you knew her when. She just has this gift, and um, she found out we were going to come over here, and she was like, "Hey, Missy, I know I don't have your class or whatever, but can you work me into the docket?" I'm like, "Work you into the docket? Of course." And um, she is doing self-written songs tonight. And uh, I just, I know y'all are going to just go, oh, my soul. I'll do it, Katie. I'll watch it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah, that's the funniest. I said, hey, don't you want to take your keyboard out to the car? No, I'm carrying it with me. I don't trust people. To the bathroom, <laughs> to the lunchroom. It never left her side. That's the right there. That's right. Now, are you going to belt this thing, or do you want me to hold a mic up? What do you want to do? Uh, my mic. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, Mrs. C. Bye, love. Oh, gosh. Okay. 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 Hi, 
guys. <laughs> like Miss Cunningham said, I'm Justice, and these are self-written songs about things that's gone on in my life and with church and different things like that. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit scared because I don't sing them for a lot of people, so feel privileged. <laughs> I'm sick of the fighting, I'm sick of the crying, I'm tired of trying to fix things that have been wrong. I don't know what to say, I don't know how to show the hurt in my heart or the tears on my pillow. Something doesn't feel right here, something feels disconnected. The place that gave me hope now leaves me hollow. Telling me your lies, your scandalous surprise. I can't bear the thought anymore. You thought you could fix me, you thought I was broken. It's not a token of your love. Something doesn't feel right here, something feels disconnected. The place that gave me hope now leaves me hollow and hollow. And hollow, and hollow, yeah. And hollow, and hollow, and hollow, yeah. You thought you could fix me, you thought I would mold into your sculpture, but you were fooled. And now that you see who I've become, you should run, better run far away from here. Something doesn't feel right here, something feels disconnected. The place that gave me hope now leaves me hollow and hollow and hollow and hollow. Please come here and see the darkness fall down. I can hear your spirit hit the ground. And sometimes when I look out through my window, I can hear the sparrows cry, a harmonious melody. And when I close my eyes, you'll know that you'll be forever in my heart. I'll let them know that it's beautiful. It's beautiful, it's beautiful to me. It's beautiful, it's beautiful 
So last night I kind of got a message from Connor, and he was like, "Let's do Anna's tomorrow." I'm just yeah. No. 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 <laughs> Sorry, but no. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> um, and he was like, "Let's do Anna's side by Walk the Moon," and I was like, "Okay, yeah, let's do Anna's side." No, mm. because we had a variety show a couple days ago that we did, and. This was the song we did, but it's going to be really weird because we just got the drum. Because I don't know how to do the rest of the stuff. <laughs> so, we'll we, well, yeah, this is also the first time we're doing this just us, so. <sighs> I'm ready whenever you want. Do you want to start off? Sure. I'll help you. One, two, one, two, three. Screen falling off the door, door hanging off the hinges. My feet are still sore, my back's on the fringes. We tore up the walls, we slept on couches. We lifted this house, we lifted this house. Firecrackers in the east, my car parked south. Your hands on my cheeks, your shoulder in my mouth. I was up against the wall on the west mezzanine. We rattled this town, we rattled this scene. Oh, and a sign. Oh, 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 and a sign. What do you know? This house is falling apart. What can I say? This house is falling apart. We got no money, but we got a heart. We're gonna rattle this ghost town. What do you know? This house is falling apart. What can I say? This Got no money, but we got a heart. We're gonna rattle 
I believe that Teenage Row is the strongest and most passionate thing anybody could ever experience. Not many people are lucky enough to get to be a part of that life-changing friendship that I was. It was having a best friend, knowing I could count on him for anything, and essentially never wanting to be without him. Through the good and the bad, that year and three months was definitely the most memorable year of my life, all because I met that one guy. Some of you might have had the chance to experience a love like that and keep it within your grip. Not everybody is that lucky, though, and I wasn't. It seems like I just woke up one day and my whole entire world was upside down and never to be back again. Before I knew it, it was a year later and I realized I still had the flowers he had bought me for my previous birthday and a piece of paper perfect with all the cute text messages he sent me throughout our whole relationship. I know that sounds insane, but little things like that come to mean so much to someone and become incredibly hard to part with when it's all you have left of them. Eventually, the day came when I had to burn the pictures, throw away the flowers, and break the necklace having my heart and mind held us together when in reality we had long since departed. And just let me tell you, it's not easy. Since that very day, and still this very second, I struggle endlessly with this thing that once made me completely happy. Then it comes to the final realization that it was all my fault. And moving on, trying to move on from that is the hardest thing. Moving on should be easy with everything that's been done, but for me there's no escape. I'm looking down the barrel of a loaded gun. Many things I wish I knew, too many things that I can't mend. I just wish everything was back to normal and I was as happy as I pretend. The same dull facade that I paint on every day caught the intensity of his words and slowly melts away. The hardest thing to accept is knowing where he stands and all the things for which I long are effortless demands. It's part of life or you'll be okay or words meant to heal the pain. But this is the part called agony that fills me with disdain. He has learned so much from his adventures this past year, while I've learned absolutely nothing, but not the secret of shed a tear. For one of these days, I'll finally discover the art of God's master plot, and it will all come together perfectly as the things that I've been taught. gentleman here with me tonight I saw him and I said all right Ezra could you pretty please do some art to take to Alma and if he'd hold it a little higher into the air children he did this in under two hours had never used chalk before and I just hope y'all will give it up for my man <laughs> If I have, forgive me. Come on, Nanny, my other crew. Hey, Connor, I still love you. Hey. <laughs> Look at Connor. <laughs> Begin to salivate. <laughs> um, Libby has a partner in crime, and we're the awesome threesome, and we usually write together, but our thirdsome could not be here tonight, so I'm just kind of hanging out with Libby because I'm really liking this chair. <laughs> I can't miss that. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Okay. Um, I have <laughs> I have two other poems, and my voice still doesn't work. It hasn't changed since I've been up here last. So, um, yeah, I have two poems, and um, Haley, which is my partner in crime, or Miss Cunningham calls us butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Think of it. You never see a unibutt. I'm sorry. This is all. <laughs> <laughs> Lost their butt in the war. We don't want to know. <laughs> okay, so I have I have a partner in crime slash not Unibutt. And um, her name's Haley, but she couldn't be here for whatever reason. And um, Haley, Miss Cunningham, and I write poetry, and we're poetry freaks. We love to write together and separate and in groups of two and in another, other, you know, situation you could figure out with that one. And this was one that we wrote as a collective unit. Further note, I love the word, the phrase collective unit. Just saying, okay. Um, all right, the first one. The past is the past, but we never really acknowledge that. We always want to be the person we used to be, know the people we used to know, and be the places we used to be. It never ends. Reliving the past, or wait, yeah, reliving the past hurts. It really hurts us. And we need to break free and be new, lovely people. This one's called We Choose. Um, there is no returning to yesterday, yet we often choose to live in the past. 
We seldom accompany new days with bright smiles and eager eyes. That could change our lives for good. Away from all I knew. Couldn't this life be couldn't life be good for me? Couldn't you be good for me? Or am I destined to wander aimlessly, wishing, hoping, and longing? When will enough time have passed for me to realize I deserve to be joyful and bright and new? I'm not a book with a, with with the last page. No one wants to read. I will not bring a sorrow to the world, and I will not let the pain in this unfortunate past bring me to my knees. Yeah. Uh, just so everybody knows, the reason I keep stopping is not because I'm a weenie, but these are copies, and you can't read half of them. So, okay. <laughs> this is the other poem. And um, anybody who's in any of Miss Cunningham's classes, like, she's been reading poems that me and Haley wrote, because we have a secret admirer, or we are secret admirers to a very cute boy. And um, are you gonna read it tonight here now? I'm gonna read the one, one of the ones about him, yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm not telling anybody's <laughs> name. <laughs> and I'm not saying any names or anything, but I'm gonna read the poem, one of the poems. So this is how this goes. Okay. Um, everyone has that glorious boy or girl. In my case, it's a boy. Just say. Um, that makes <laughs> that makes his or her entire day. You know, with the simplest gestures, like a sweet sentence or a smile or even a nod. That one person who makes us feel like one of the living, one of the glorious, wonderful ones. This poem is a testament to being in someone's light and being made new by their presence. Even if, even if you barely exchange words, which we don't. We don't know this boy. Um, <laughs> this one's called And You Said. The angst I feel inside as I witness you walking by. A broadened smile, a comfortable disposition. And you say your simple hello, I never can be sad near you. You always make me well from the dangers I feel inside. They seem less... I don't know what that says. <laughs> what does that say? This is your handwriting. This is what you've done. <laughs> they seem less urgent, leaving me more brave. And this is refreshing because... <laughs> I feel less like a demon that should be hid away from life. You're a brighter day and a stronger soul than I could ever become. You make me want to be what I thought I could never, I never could, I could never. If that doesn't happen, I know you will offer the love and acceptance and that'll make all the difference. Yay. I just spent two and a half hours Tell em. trying to get here <laughs> from Waycross because, uh, what are directions, right? <laughs> okay. So I wrote a poem. I'd like to read it for you guys. And have an intro as well. And it goes, several times during my life, I come up with these ideas, whether they be awesome or petty, but nonetheless, they're ideas. Upon realizing these things, I figure I could do them if only I had time. And I realize, oh wait, I do. And begin thinking about... <laughs> um, I begin thinking about how I could do this idea, and then I spend so much time thinking about how intricate the process would be. And uh, I waste so much time in the process, then realize that I only have a very limited amount of time left to do this feat. And then as my mom says, begin to work myself into a frenzy because I have so little time to do it. And I do a very subpar job at this thing that could have been so exceptional. These things, they don't only happen like outside of school, they actually happen a lot during school. So. Uh, a lot of my work may seem like I don't put a lot of effort into it, but I don't know. I might just be making up excuses. Who knows? Anyways, questionable results are the reasons many things I plan on doing are completed or even initiated. A colossal amount of time is generally wasted in the process. This is understood, however, because it is only understood and not learned upon. Nothing is resolved. And when things are planned, planned henceforth, I am faced with the same enigma. And so I realized that an astronomical quantity of time is being thrown away just by meditating on the realization. So, as usual, I endured the dilemma. Sometimes the obstacle is dodged and great things are accomplished. 
though more times than not, nothing is attained and a mediocre result is produced. All that is left is a flustered lad with daft ideas that were not executed. And when implemented, the absurd conceptions could be crafted into something potentially grand, to the extent of which people could simply look in awe of this masterpiece. However, because of the obstacles we cannot dodge, very little justice is even done. When this issue of this problem is resolved, is when real progress can be seen and then something will pr be created, something great. Hey everybody, I'm, most of y'all know me, I'm Marquia, sophomore here. Um, I wasn't going to do a poem, but I feel I want to do it now. Most of y'all know that I'm like real like going and crazy. I do what I want, y'all know. I'm senior citizen though. But I just senior wrote citizen. this. It's one I had wrote already, but I just kind of reworded it real quick and I did it in about two minutes, so. It don't, it might, okay, y'all know my daddy died, right? Everybody that knew my daddy knew that he was just like me and my mom was like real conservative and, and lame. But. <laughs> That's just us. <laughs> And so uh, this poem just kind of describes my daddy and my relationship before he died. Like, he named me who I am. And, like, he always told me he wanted me to be something, be different from the rest of these girls around here. So, uh, The girl you see is not the girl I am. I smile, I laugh, inside I'm hurt. I give my last, I give my all. Whenever you need help, I'll be the one you call. I love hard, I do. I live life with no regrets. Cheerleader, honor student, that's who I am. I go out every weekend when I really just want to stay in and sleep. I follow in my dad's footsteps. My mom's not so much. I'm wild, I'm lame, I'm boring, all the same. One day I'll be rich, working on your kids. But for now, I'm just my kid, plain and simple. I bet you're wondering where the beginning of the poem went. The sad part? Oh, it's still there, but you'll never know. My smile covers it all, and that's the only thing I say. Hi. Um, my name is Taylor Perryman. Um, I'm a freshman, so I'm not completely as cool as everybody else in here, but I am from Bacon County. So I'm going to read a poem that my sister wrote. She's my awesome, um, lovely sister. Uh, yeah, she's in Athens with MBLA. What? Amber. Anyway. Well, it's called I Saw, and I love it. And once again, I'm going to say my sister wrote it because I don't want to take credit for this awesome thing right here. Um, okay, it's called I Saw. I saw that your burden was too much to bear, so I added some of your burden to my own. You looked at me in outrage and asked, why did I not take more? I saw that your heart was heavy, so I added some of its weight to my own. You looked at me with spite and questioned, why did I not take more? When I saw your eyes filled with sadness, I added some of your despair to my own. So you demanded it was not enough. Why did I not take more? Finally, my legs weary, my spirit tired and sore. I begged you to take some of my burden, but you said you could hold no more. My heart was weighed down and weakened. I begged you to lift in my soul, or lighten my soul. But alas, you had troubles of your own, and you said you could take no more. So with sadness, I witnessed your latest suffering, but as you asked me to add it to my own, I shook my head quietly, and finally I saw I could take no more. That's what I thought. Um, this, this, this is a poem that I wrote today during gym, and I just threw it together so it really doesn't rhyme or make much sense, but I wrote it about my best friend and everything like that, and, and it's called Autobiography. If I had to write an autobiography, I wouldn't be able to put it on paper because I would have to describe everything, everything including you. Ever since you walked into my life, my whole view of things changed. The world seemed like a better place and my life didn't seem as bad anymore. Every single day, you never failed to make me laugh and every single day I do because just hearing your name is funny. I'm glad you're here for me and that I can trust you because I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have you. You're my whole life and I love you like a sister. So if I had to write an autobiography, I wouldn't be able to do it without you. Hey, my name's Lee 
Lisa with two S's, by the way. Um, I'm a senior this year. I just moved here in January, but I know everybody like I've known them forever. And I'm reading a poem that I like. It's called To Do Is From God. I ran my life in search of worldly, worldly things. My time and will were firmly in control. I thought I had no need for what God brings. I gave no heed to murmurs from my soul. Your, pl your planning is doing all the time, it says. But something else is missing deep inside. Your mind is willing, but your heart is dead. So turn to God and let go of your pride. I did, and God said, here's my plan for you. Give your life to me and just let go. Have faith and pray and read the Bible through, and you'll have blessings more than you can know. So simple, yet it brings me perfect peace. Living life for God that way I should. Direction, purpose, fullness, and release. Live life with God is very, very good. Mm. You tell me, you tell me. I cannot back up all these meaningful poems and stuff like that, that people have been writing and saying out here, but I actually, my motivation for these poems was cake. I was promised cake if I was to write this quick enough. Yes. Cake! Ah, it was, and it was good. It was good. All right. Um, it was there. I have two of them. One of them is entitled Halloween, and it is actually an acrostic of how the word of the word Halloween. All right. Hallowed halls and scary beasts. All the children getting treats. Love the chill of nighttime air. Lovely costumes everywhere. On broomsticks, witches, witches shall fly. Weeping shadows catch the eye. Entering homes for Halloween fun, everywhere for everyone, never stopping until the rising sun. Cake. Yeah, I could win the world with cake. All right. Thanksgiving. It is also another acrostic of Thanksgiving. And I wrote this one in like five minutes. I wrote both of them in a span of five minutes. Turkey dinners, family feasts, happy times, delightful eats. All the relatives coming together, not seeing any of them in forever. Knowing that the food will be swell, sweet pies and cakes your stomach shall quell. Gro growling stomachs welcome the meal, inviting your taste buds to seal the deal. Variations of color all orange, red, and brown. I do love Thanksgiving, good feeling all around. Nothing can stop the stories and love, giving thanks to the big man above. I like that, I like that. I want to start this off by asking Ms. Cunningham a question. Where are you? Right here. I moved so I can see better. Okay. Hey, thank you. <laughs> um, you remember, not saying names, but you remember uh, those many failed attempts I asked you to get to a certain someone for me, and that certain someone was like, no. And then I tried again, and I kept trying, and that person was like, no. Well... They held a grudge for a little bit too long, so I'm done with all that. Just wanted to let you know that uh, I'm moving on to brighter days, not worrying about that anymore. So, um, this was kind of, uh, this kind of branched off from those thoughts. It, it basi it's basically, um, like, have you ever had those thoughts where you're like, uh, I wonder if so-and-so is thinking about me right now. I wonder if this crap is going on in your head or whatever. Well, I've had those thoughts that, before. That, uh, that was um, going through my head one time. I was like, I wonder if so-and-so is thinking about me right now. And I, I just, like, I think I looked myself in the mirror and told myself to stop. <laughs> because it, it's just a, a really cliche thing to do and... I, a lot of times I can't really stand those cliche kind of thoughts, and it, it actually almost started out as cliche, and that's when I was like, no, this isn't going to be another one of those love poems or desperate for love poems. It's just uh, going to be a love story that once was. It, uh, it's called There's a Day. There's a day when I stopped wondering. There's a day when you should, too. A day when you put to rest the thought of me and you. But just for a minute, let's think about the past. How I would take your hand in mine and time refused to pass. Remember when your brown eyes took hold of evergreen? In a way, we'd be the same as far as we, as far as we had seen. Now let me quickly warn you to stay in present day, for you could lose yourself in time and never find your way. You'll get caught up in me, you may begin to mourn, 
for now you know that I'm long gone. Between us, you'll feel torn. That's why I stopped wondering. That's why you should too. Unless you can look back and smile, at least for a little while. Mm. I like that poem. This is a poem that I really wrote, not that poetic or anything, <laughs> but I wanted to give it a shot. Miss Carter really wanted me to come, so I said, why not? <laughs> Uh, my life keeps on going and friends come and go. I won't conform and I won't stay in place. No one will hold me back and can almost fight through the day. And this facade becomes my mask. No one can hold me back. They tried but get nowhere. Feeding on the difference leeches to creativity. They love their indifference, but I will be different and I won't let that go. Hmm. So scared of breaking it that you won't let it bend And I wrote through hundred letters I will never send Sometimes these cuts are so much deeper than they seem You'd rather cover up, I'd rather let them bleed So let me be, and I'll set you free Oh yeah, I am in misery There ain't Time is like a river that so uh, swallows you whole. While you're sitting around thinking about what you can't change and worrying about all the wrong things, time is flying by, moving so fast. You better make it count, cause you can't get it back sometimes. The mountain you've been climbing is just a grain of sand. And what have you been out there searching for forever? is in your hands oh when you figure out love is all that matters after all it sure makes everything else seem so small sometimes that mountain you've been climbing is just a grain of sand and what have you been out there searching for forever is in your hands. What? And 
then you figure out Love is all that matters after all It sure makes everything else Oh, it sure makes everything else Seem so small I'll see you in Waycross.